morning on behalf of the Mount Hope Missionary Baptist Church family located in historical Fort Ward edition of our city at 118 West Gray. On behalf of our pastor, our first lady, Cecile Smith, the officers and members of this great church family, we extend to you a cordial welcome. We are happy for those who have joined us here in the sanctuary and those of you who are joining us by social media. Again, you are welcome. Certainly, if you're in need of a church home, we'd be happy to have you as brothers and sisters in Christ. Again, we say to you, you are welcome. Somebody say, bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Why? Because he's always, not sometime, but always worthy be, to be praised. If you're able to stand and help us lift God and praise him this morning, stand to your feet as we sing.
Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Amen. God is good. And all the time. Amen. I'm going to be reading from 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians um, chapter 3. And I'm going to start at verse 9. So when you have it, say amen. As Pastor would say, you want to soak your soul with the vernacular of these words, amen. Please stand for the reading of the word. Reading. For we are laborers together with God. Ye are God's husbandry. Ye are God's building. According to the grace of God which is given unto me, as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, and another buildeth thereon. But let every man take heed how he buildeth thereupon. For other foundation can no man lay than is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now, if any man build upon this foundation gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest. For the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire. And the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work abide which he had built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. Amen. Amen. Please remain standing for the power of prayer. Thank you, Jesus. 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 It is not just good to be alive, but it's good to be alive and saved. Father God, we thank you for your goodness, your kindness. Your love and your mercy that lasts from everlasting to everlasting. We glorify your name because you are the only one and true living God. You're the God of my life and the captain of my soul. Thank you for the power of the cross. Thank you for the blood of Jesus. Thank you for the, for the precious Holy Spirit. We thank you this morning, Heavenly Father, just to be saved and covered by your blood. We honor you. We glorify your name. We belong to you, and you belong to us. Heavenly Father, we ask that you come into our service this morning. Somebody need a word. Somebody that tuned in this morning need a blessing. Oh God, move, have your way in the mighty name of Jesus. Bless the preaching of the gospel. Bless our song service. Oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. We ask that you bless our pastor. Bless him in his body. Bless him in his finances. Oh God, in Jesus' name. 
and bless his wife, oh God, because they are one in the mighty name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, this service of yours, move, heal, deliver, and set free. And you that are tuned in this morning, the saying God is with us is with you. We give you the glory. We give you the honor. You are our Lord, our God, our buckle, and our shield. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Let the church say amen. I will bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me, bless his whole. I dare you to remember what he's done for you. Count them out, sing them out. Oh, Lord, he has. He has done great things. Do you remember when? He has. He has. You didn't see a way through. But he opened.
just want to praise you forever and ever and ever for all you've done for me. Blessings and glory and honor. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, thank the Lord this morning. Thank you, 
things you've done, but everything thank you, Jesus. Hey, I want to tell you thank you. Thank you, Jesus. For blessing me. Yes, yes, yes. out of obedience to God. Uh, many of you know that I teach Tuesday night Bible study. I just closed out a series on witnessing. And at the conclusion of that series, God told me something to say. And I didn't say it. I didn't say it out of blank disobedience to him, but I I didn't say it because I was ashamed. God shared with me, Walter, the next time you stand, say that before you say anything. Uh, I've been called into ministry now for some years, and I remember when I first came into ministry, I told God, God, take my life and use it. That means anything that happens or transparent in my life, that God can take that and use it. But some time ago, I, I concluded Bible study by talking about how can you say you love God when you have hatred for one another. I concluded to say that the reason why man love God, why, why God loved man, and that's all men, he loved humanity because we were created in his image. And whenever God looks down and he sees you and I, or he sees anybody that's created in a human existence, God should be able to see himself when he sees us. But sometimes we do things that distorts God's image within us. And I concluded and I said this. Uh, that when we ought to be able to see man like God sees man, then we should be able to love one another like God loves us. And God told me to share this, and I was ashamed because some time ago, even though I love God, even though I was preaching and proclaiming the gospel, it was my belief that some people had came up against me and I began to have hatred. It, it had begotten so bad. I never owned a gun, never held a gun, never shot a gun. But I had plotted in my mind that I was going to go purchase me a pistol. And the next time that I saw them, that they come up against me, I was going to end it all. I, I was wise enough to talk to my pastor. I was wise enough to talk to some, 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 some wise people. They didn't beat me up. God didn't beat me up. Tell me, you're a preacher. You say, blah, 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 blah. Simply what they did, they just loved the hell out of me. And I just want to encourage somebody today that if you have anything against anybody, whether they've wronged you or you've wronged them, I'm encouraging you today to let it go simply by if you apologizing to them are you accepting that they did what they did to you because they just didn't know the truth? Because this is what unforgiveness does and hatred does. It keeps you tied down and anchored down. So therefore, you cannot reach the utopia in God that God has designed for you to do. But when you set them free, 
God is able to take you to another level in your life and in your worship. With that being said, it's often time. Scripture teaches us to bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse. God said that there might be meat in my house. But I like the challenge that he issues to us. He say, try me and see if I will not open up windows. He say, and pour you out blessings that you'll never have room to receive. I don't know if you're a tither today, but I challenge you in this season, or oh, in this Christmas season, when we get ready to buy gifts and buy stuff that we really don't need, I, I challenge you today that if you're not a tither, not just to become a tither, but become a committed tither, even in Christmas season, God, I'm going to give back to you first. Gracious God, our Father, God, how we love you, God, how we thank you, and how we honor you. Father, we just pray today, God, your blessings up over the gifts, Master, that we're preparing to return to you. Oh, Master, forgive us if we've been unfaithful and unjust stewards over our finances, and if we've allowed our own enticement to cause us to rob you in the enticement to come this season. God, forgive us, oh God. And give us the wisdom and the courage that when we return to this place, we return not just out of obedience, but God, we, retire, we return with your tithes and your offerings. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, certainly, if you participate in our offertorial worship, I said it's an offertorial worship. It's a worship. It's a worship. It's a worship. This is our way of worshiping God through giving, through giving. Uh, there are three, three ways that you can do it. They're on the screen. You can mail it in. You can bring it in. Uh, you can go to Cash App, or you can go through PayPal, or you can go through PayPal. Uh, we just encourage you to just become a faithful. Listen here, church, Facebook, Zoom. God does not reward famous. He's not going to reward you for your famous, but God will reward you because of your faithfulness, because of your faithfulness. That's a good place bless, to worship right there. Bless, 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 Come on, come on, church. We're blessed in the field. Any blessed people in the house? Where we go and where we go. We have found every strong place in the sand of our team of seeds. But the devil is defeated. We are blessed. Yes, yes, yes. Late in the midnight hour. Yeah. God's going to turn it around. Yes, yes. Kids going to work in your grave. Late in the midnight hour, God's gonna turn around. It's gonna work. It's gonna work in your favor. Late in the midnight hour, God's gonna turn around. 
Brother Melvin, bless the offering, Brother Melvin. Some witnesses have been in the late night, late in the midnight. Hours. Cops gonna, Cops turn, gonna turn it around. It's gonna work it's it's gonna, gonna work in your favor. Help us praise his holy name. Late in the Work it 
Eternal God, Thou who made us, the one who know all about us, before Thy holy throne we come, humbling ourselves at Thy footstool of mercy. Thanking you for our last night's lying down. And then, Lord, for this early morning awakening. You know what things we stand in the need of because of who you are. We just ask that thou wouldest have thine own way with us, in us, through us, and for us. If it ever was a time that we need you, We sure need you right now. Speak thou through thy servants everywhere as we stand. Send a word to your people through your vessels. You know what to do because of who you are. Have thine own way. Have thine own way. Knowing that we 
we ever stand in the need. Have thine own way. Save today. Heal today. Deliver today. Strengthen today. Have thine own way. Oh God, in a time when turmoil is all over the land and country, in a time when ungodliness It's going rampant throughout the land and country. But in a time when we know that you are totally and completely in charge. So Lord, if it be pleasing with you, Bring chaos into order. And let your will, your way, triumph. We know that you can. And we believe you will. Ride in your sovereign power through your vessels that you will stand up and become instruments in your divine will. Have thine own way. Have thine own way. And God, we know that one of these days it will be over for us on this side. But on the other side, May we be able to hear your voice say, servant, well done. In Jesus' holy name, amen. We're going to ask that you would stand with us. If you don't mind. And I'm going to ask that you would help me to sing I Need Thee every hour. That ought, ought to be the request of every person standing and seated. Because the song implies that we as God's creatures are helpless without the Creator. Not just this moment do we need him, but every breath we breathe, we need him. And 
Now, I'm not asking you to sing this song because you know it. I'm asking you to sing this song because it is truly the testimony of every being present today. We need the Lord. I need the every hour most great just Lord no tell the voice like thine can peace afford I need the oh I need thee Let me say the words. I want you to listen. And after I say them, I want you to sing them. 
I need thee. Oh, I need thee. Every hour, I need thee. Oh, bless me now, my Savior. I come today. Now, if you don't mind. Oh, I need the oil. Since you collectively did not help me get your Bible, maybe you will read with me. Get your Bible. If you don't have a Bible, stand next to somebody with a Bible and open your Bible to the book of Deuteronomy chapter 16 Deuteronomy chapter 16 Deuteronomy chapter 16. And what we want to do is to read verses 11 and 12. Deuteronomy 16 verses 11 and 12 Deuteronomy chapter 16 and verse 11 says and thou shall rejoice before the Lord thy God. Thou and thy sons and thy daughter and thy manservant and thy maid servant, and the Levite that is within thy gates, and the stranger, and the fatherless, and the widow that are among you in the place which the Lord thy God has chosen to place his name there. And thou shalt remember that thou wast a bondsman in Egypt 
thou shalt observe and do these statues. And uh, we want to use for a subject remembering your past and your presence. Remembering your past and your presence. Amen. These words were uttered by Moses to the children of Israel. As God gave him instructions One of the major endeavors of our message today is that we're soon to forget once we arrive. We're soon to forget once we Arrive. You see, when life was a struggle, we find, found ourselves always called in on the name of the Lord. But as soon as we got a biscuit above starvation, we act like we'd never been hungry. <laughs> or we act like that uh, we never had to go through any suffering, any struggles of life. In other words, we possess the spirit of ingratitude once we arrive and somebody is saying I, I, I haven't arrived yet but we can reach that point of life but it's always in our favor to remember where we came from to where we are. Blessings can come when we stay in constant remembrance of our endeavors. I hope you will hear me. Um, God wants us to never ever forget and always to keep in remembrance. You see, when we forget about 
our struggles of life because of the affluency. We take on uh, an attitude of ingratitude. And God does not want his chief creation to ever assume the spirit of ingratitude. Because when you adorn the spirit of ingratitude, we also adapt the spirit of selfishness. And God never ever wants selfishness to be the thing that we promote. One of the reasons is because of the way we are uniquely made. See, God didn't make us like he made other of his creation. God gave us a bit of himself that we would be able to be true represent, representatives of him on the planet that he left us in. We ought to be able to know what God is like by observing one another. I, I don't think you hear me today. Uh, God is not a cantankerous God an arrogant God, a hateful God. God is loving. I heard one writer say that he is patient and he is forgiving He's merciful and he's kind. <clears throat> Being God's chief creation, All right. we ought to also be demonstrators of our Creator. You, 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 I, I hope you will walk with me because of contagious spirits that emulates the spirit of hatefulness, the spirit of jealousy the spirit of anger. All of those attributes is not true representatives of the Almighty. And God 
have not put us on planet Earth to be misrepresentatives who he is all about, or what he is all about. God has placed us on planet Earth to be true representatives of our Creator. And when we represent Him, it ought to be a true representation. It ought not to be falsehood. Amen. For deceitfulness is not an attribute of God. Anger Somebody say, but God does get angry. <clears throat> but his anger is not like humanistic anger. Amen. Well, I heard one writer say, you can be angry, but don't sin. Amen. You, 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 you ought not to have a spirit of taking folk out. You ought to have a spirit of blessing folk. And uh, you may say, well, preacher, Oh, that's not in the scripture that you read, but it, it is because God knows that he is delivering that you can reflect back on former things. But don't let former things and former occurrences be a part of your demeanor. You, 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 can, you can look back on how far you have come. But don't let where you have come from become a part of your makeup. I, I heard the writer Paul say, be not deceived, for God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man saw it. That shall they also reap. Amen. Uh, you can put it down, but one day you're going to have to pick it up. So whatever you put down, just be assured that what goes around, come around. Are oh, you walking with me? And when this 
text was given to me and the subject matter, remembering your past and your presence. It was what the Lord was saying to a people that he delivered. And God was speaking to Israel and their past life. I want you to follow me, if you will. Was a past life of suffering. Past life of being abused and misused. But what God was saying to Israel, the people that he was delivering, that when I take you out of that situation and start blessing you, then you don't let your past life hinder your blessings. You see, uh, only God, help me out if you will, has the authority to handle abusiveness. Only God has the authority to justify or rectify life like it ought to be. Somebody say, well, preacher, what are you really saying? We live in a day and a time, help me out if you will, that ungodliness seem to have the upper hand. We live in a day and a time when look like Rome is on the throne and right is, is suppressed. But uh, what God is saying to us today is that he is totally in charge. And what he want you to do that once you are liberated, help me out if you will, once that you are rescued, then you ought to become a rescuer. For I hear the Lord say that vengeance is mine, saith the Lord, and I will repay. If your enemy hunger, feed him. If he has a need of water, give him a drink. And so dawn you will heap coals of fire upon his head. Oh, my brothers and my sisters, it's all right to remember where you come from. It's all right to look back on all of the abuse, all of the mixed use, misuse that you have suffered. But it's better for you to look forward in knowing that there is a God. 
Help me out if you will. That is sitting high and looking low. And this is really the message that God gave to Moses to give to Israel. And I'm giving it to us today because you can have in a private entertainment that I'm going to avenge myself. But oh, be careful that while you are entertaining avenging that you're not setting up for yourself. Amen. To be involved in the stumbling block. For as, and I'm going to my text and going to a close, as Israel was wandering in the wilderness, are you walking with me? God instructed Moses to prepare them for their future. And I want to say to us today, wherever you are, that the future belongs to God. And God is so able to make known to you and present to you whatever he has in store and whatever he has planned to bless you with. But you have to stay in remembrance that even though I have been struggling, but I am on my way to being blessed. Even though I've gone through the turmoils of life. And, and that's what Moses was re, uh, informing Israel about. He says, to them, now you've spent 400 years in obscurity. you spent 400 years of suffering. you spent 400 years of going through turmoil. But oh, you're on your way to a promised land. You're on your way to a land where the land is flowing with milk and honey. You're on your way to a land of, of pleasantry. You're on your way to joy and peace. But oh, when you get over there, don't forget how you had to suffer to ride. Don't forget that you had to go through some things of life to arrive at the blessing that I have in store for you. And so listen to what he says in this 12th verse. And thou, hey, help me out, shall remember that thou was a bondsman in Egypt. In other words, you went through a lot of suffering. And thou shalt observe and do these statutes. Amen. In other words, you, you, ought, not, you ought not to let hate make you hateful. Help me out, Holy Spirit. You ought not to let anger embrace your bosom. But you ought to remember that the God you serve is an able God. Anybody know he's able? He is able to keep you from falling and present you faultless before his presence with exceeding joy. He's able. And so you ought to let whatever you've gone through with uh, not to be 
forgotten, but you ought to let it be a reminder to you of the blessing that you're going to receive. Amen. I don't know about you, but I'm so glad that the God I serve is a neighbor of God. Anybody know who he's a neighbor of God? Anybody know that he is a way maker? Anybody know that he's a door opener? Anybody know that he is a blesser of blessings? Anybody know that he is able to keep you from falling and present your fathers before his presence with exceeding joy? If you know that, then you ought to remember your past. And then you ought to rejoice at where God is bringing you. God bless you. Amen. Somebody say that's very short. Well, I can only preach as my boss give me to preach. I am bound for the promised land. I am bound for the promised land. Oh, who will come and go with me? I am bound for the promised must land on church the star me banks I stand and cast a wishful eye to King Lums fast and happy land where my possession lie. I am bound for the promised land. Is there one today? I am bound for the promised land. Oh, who will come? And go with me, I am bound for the promised land. You can remember, if you, if you want to, your struggles of life. And somebody may still be struggling, but I want to say to you, that God is available to turn, turn your struggling into blessings. All you have to do is do like the children of Israel did. Obey him. Pack up and walk out of wherever you are in presently in Bob, in Bob then, and say to him, I heard you, and I want to obey you. If you're here today, and your life is not like you know it should be, your life is not like you want it to be, I serve a life changer. I serve a door opener. I serve a way maker. And he said to you today, get up from where you are presently and say yes to the call of God and watch him make ways out of no ways and open doors that are shut. You're here today. You've been coming. You've been wor worshiping with us. And the Lord is saying to you today, Today is the time for you to make a change in your life. 
once you adhere to what he's saying to you and get up from where you're seated and say yes to the call of Christ. Is there one candidate for baptism? By letter, like she's an experienced sinner, backslider, we invite you to come. Is there one? It is ours to extend. It's yours to accept or to reject. 